in 101, the non-majors biology, that's really where we've been studying this. And um, those students, we have them in groups of four to six students. They're in fixed groups for the entire quarter. And as we've done this over the years, the recommendation has always been, well, do mixed aptitude groupings because your high ability students will help your lower ability students, right? That's kind of been the message we've gotten over the years. But we realized there wasn't any empirical evidence for that. And so we thought, why not study this? And so that's what we've done. We've basically done three iterations of a group study. Um, it's ongoing uh, this quarter as well. In the first iteration last winter, we took students and classified them as low, high, and mid aptitude students and put them in like and mixed ability groups and studied that. And then in spring 2015, we allowed students to self-select. And then this quarter, we um, surveyed for demographic variables and placed them into groups based on that criteria. Now, the methods of assessment are really similar for all three, so I'm going to take you through the methods of the aptitude-based groups as an example. All right, <clears throat> so last winter, what we did is we had 384 undergraduate students, the two sections of Bio 101 that we have here, and we had them take a pre-assessment and an attitudes-based survey about their ideas towards group work. The pre-assessment was done on the first day of class. It's a 60-question pre-assessment. This assessment was used in, in all of the, all three iterations of this study that we've done. The pre-assessment's very helpful because we got a grade distribution, and that's how we ranked students as high, mid, or low in terms of their content knowledge for the course. What we used that data for is to randomly assign students into either mixed aptitude or like aptitude groups. So we ended up with 32 mixed groups. That's a high, mid, and a low student. At least one of each would classify as mixed. We also had 32 like groups. So this is how that distribution looked. We had seven all low aptitude students in a group. So seven of those groups, 19 mid-aptitude groups, and six high. We also gave them a post-assessment, and at the end of the quarter, gave them in the attitudinal survey again to see how attitudes towards group work had changed over time. Um, when we assessed the data from all three of these study, of course, the third one's ongoing, um, we did um, hierarchical linear modeling so that we could account for the non-independence of students within a single group. And so Deb's, oh, no, I'm going to tell you about question, and then Deb's will, Deb will talk about um, results. So the questions we wanted to get out of the aptitude-based uh, study is, you know, is mixed better than like, right? Are, are these recommendations, that, that premise seems so logical, is, is that actually true? And then we wanted to know as well, what about attitudes? Do students in mixed groups have better attitudes about working in groups compared to being in, in a like aptitude group? Okay. It's like tag team Switch. wrestling, but different. That's right. <laughs> okay, so um, so basically, what we found is that the um, low aptitude students did much better in mixed groups, and and so, and there's actually some conflicting evidence about this in the literature. So there's some evidence that shows that grouping students in likability groups helps them. And so, so there is some conflicting things. Most of that stuff comes from the K-12 literature, there, though. So, so we we're testing it in a slightly different way. But basically, what you can see here is that when students were in like groups, they did significantly worse than when they were in mixed groups. And it's only those low aptitude students that were that were affected. The mid and the high aptitude students did equally well, whether they were in a mixed or a high. So, so that's important too because the working with lower aptitude students didn't drag the high aptitude students down, which is something that, that is a worry or people worry about sometimes. So we have no evidence that that occurred. In terms of the attitude results, they very much uh, supported the content results. So the, when they were working in likability groups or like aptitude groups, those low aptitude students uh, perceived their work as being a very low quality. And yet when they were in mixed groups, they, they, record, they perceived their work as being at very high quality. So this quality of work is one of the four factors that the attitude survey um, measures. 
and it, it's the only one that was significant in this part of the study. We have reams of data, and we're just focusing on a few things that we thought might be interesting to you in terms of some of the, the more um, applicable things that we found. Okay, so the second study that we did, uh, as Georgianne uh, told you, we allowed students to self-select, and this is a way that a lot of instructors will allow their students to work into groups. So, you know, find five other people, you're working in a group. So what we did here is um, we, and I apologize for everybody who's red, green, color blind. Dan, we have to work on this. <laughs> Dan's our stats guy, and he's the one who's, who's been helping us with all the HLMs. Anyway, um, so when we allowed them to self-select, and we, uh, we uh, gave them a heads up that they were going to be doing this, and they did a little bit of work beforehand, or selection beforehand, but we ended up with 22 mixed groups. So the mixed groups were, had at least one high, one mid, and one low. So the product, the, the major, well, and, and then, that shouldn't be a 23. That should not be a 23. My computer was doing wonky I don't things. Know where that came this from. is an eight. <laughs> that that an I, eight. <laughs> I think it started numbering them. This, 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 there were eight mid, low mid groups. So, so there were only there were eight groups where there were low aptitude students who had mid aptitude students in their group, but no high aptitude students. And then there was one mid high group, and then one all mid group. So the 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 largest proportion were mixed groups, which is good because we know that that's you know better for those low aptitude students. But then we started wondering, well, are these groups going to be sufficient to help students? So the low aptitude students. So the questions that we were asking here are, do low aptitude students have higher learning gains when they are in mixed groups or when they are in, a, in mixed groups with high students or is being with mid students enough to bump up those learning gains? And then we also asked the same question about attitudes. So we had, in the mixed groups, we had an N of 29 low aptitude students. In the low mid groups, we had an N of 18 students. So our sample size isn't super large here. What we did find, though, is that, well, we didn't find any differences. So it appears that working with mid aptitude students is enough to help those, those low aptitude students do as well as if they were in truly mixed groups. Um, and there were no direct effects of group type on the attitudes of the low aptitude students, but there were some interesting interactions that we're still trying to wrap our brains around and um, we'll be thinking about that. I, I'm not gonna present those data, but there are, there are some interesting interactions there that I think may mean something. So, okay. And so then lastly, um, we, Right now, we, we gave a um, survey that asked some demographic questions. Basically, giving a pre-assessment the first day in a large enrollment class and then trying to get them into groups before the next class meeting is challenging. And so we thought, well, if we can ask them some demographic questions that maybe correlate with how their pre-assessment score is going to go, maybe we can get them in groups beforehand and then, and then you know, be ready to go the first day. So the factors that we asked them about we are GPA, so we, their incoming or their GPA in the, at Western, the number of other science classes that they've taken, then we asked a number of um, other things, gender, race, ethnicity, the year in school, their number of high school biology classes, whether they're first gen students in their age. Some of these we thought might be predictors of, of how they were gonna come in based on um, a prior knowledge of biology, and some of them we wanted to use to balance out groups. So we put together the groups initially using these two factors to assign students to a group. And then within those groups, we tried to balance for gender and for race, ethnicity. There's literature that shows that um, you don't want to isolate um, uh, minority students or or uh, gender in a group, men or women in a group, they need to have an ally. It's better for them to have an ally within the group. So <clears throat> we then gave them the pre-assessment and then we looked to see how, what our groups looked like based on the, the, um, the uh, factors that we had used. So, and we had two sections of Biology 101 going on uh, this quarter. So we have 36 completely mixed groups 
We have 20 that are low mid groups. We have five that are mid high and then one that is all mid. Um, so as Georgianne pointed out, this is ongoing. You can go to Arnson whatever, 100. 100 or, or Fraser 4. And you can see it in action. Um, but we will be giving them the post-assessment survey, the attitude survey to look to see if the learning gains are supported. So essentially we're asking the same questions there as we did in the last, the last experiment. One of the questions that we could ask right now though, we're um, looking at the demographic factors to see whether they correlated with pre-assessment score or not. Um, the only one that did was GPA and none of the others did. So in lieu of a pre-assessment score, you could potentially use GPA to, to assign groups and, and at least get, um, a, a, you know, the, I mean, the bottom line here is that we have no all low aptitudes groups, which is, is a good thing. Okay, you wanna finish up? Yeah, so, <laughs> so our conclusions are that, at least for Bio 101, um, it's good to have students in mixed groups. It benefits low aptitude students in terms of learning gains as well as attitudinal shifts, um, positive attitudinal shifts. And it also doesn't harm our high and mid students. And you know, my concern initially was, you know, I really thought that perhaps my high aptitude students would benefit from being pulled out. You know, you think about K through 12 education and having your HCL students pulled out working together. And I thought maybe that model would fit in, in this classroom. But for the existing curriculum, you know, we've got active learning curriculum, fixed groups for the whole quarter. They, it didn't help them. And so definitely I'll continue to do these mixed ability groups. Um, it is a pain in the butt to do pre-assessment on first day. So the question might be, why not just let students self-select? They all ended up in mixed groups, right? There was one likability group and that was mid. The worry there is that if you do it, if you spring it on them the first day, you might have low aptitude students congregating in the back that might actually form. I mean, the risk would be that you actually got a low aptitude group and that, that would be not great. Um, and so, you know, our recommendation would, to, would be to do instructor-determined groups, but to use student-reported GPA. And so, I will say that, too. It's not that um, we collected GPA data. We are going to end up doing that as a part of the study this quarter. But, but this is just self-reported GPA data that correlated with pre-assessment score. So, you can put out a survey the weekend before class starts, get GPA data, and then go ahead and sort students, and then balance for gender balance for ethnicity. Um, and so that's definitely, that, that's informed my teaching that, that I'll, I'll continue to do that type of method and it'll be a lot easier than giving a pre-assessment for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's what we have, so. <laughs> <laughs>